Hi, I'm Paul Marcel. So this video is a bit of a technique video that I've extracted out of the build for the no comment number two build, which I have called the Tim Burton table. And what this is about is when I created this octagon, I created all seven sides of it because I knew that the compounding of errors was going to make it that the eighth side really wasn't going to fit perfectly anyway. So I may as well glue up all seven sides and then measure off what would be the eighth piece that I need so I get a perfect fit. And that's what this video is about, is the technique for doing that. So the eighth piece is this little piece down here. It actually goes up a little bit higher, but then it was cut off in, during the build. But what you're going to see is how we uh, measured that. So I recorded a little segment when I was doing that back during the build. So uh, let's go take a look and see how we did that. Roll it. So to figure out the miter, all we're going to do is we're just going to put this on. There's no reason to square it to the front or anything. It could be arbitrarily anywhere. This is just traced along these lines. So now I'd take a ruler and extend these so that I have the full pattern of what this is going to be. There, these are my miters. Now one thing I didn't explain after I traced the miter pattern onto the paper is well what the heck do you do with it? Now if you're creating a triangle like this, what I actually did when I did that is I took it and I had drawn it directly on the wood that I was going to be cutting. So instead of the paper, I had a piece of wood there and I just traced it. And then I eyeballed these exactly like you saw in the video about the tapered octagon. That's how I did the mitered cuts. Now I didn't have fence blocks on the side because of course I didn't know what those miters were. Now if you wanted to create fence blocks like I did in that video, what you would have done is with the triangle that's drawn on the paper, you would want to bisect that angle. So to bisect the angle very, you know, is like to create this center line that we have here on one of the triangles that I did cut. So the way that you would do that is you would measure up a distance from this point up to, I don't know, I, let's call that seven inches up to here. And then I measured seven inches from there up to this side and then connected the two dots. Now if you take this line, find the center point on it, make a line from that center point all the way down through the apex, and now you've made the center line. So that's bisected the angle. Now you could measure this angle if you want to measure it or use a transfer bevel, something like that in order to transfer it, say, to your miter gauge in order to make this part of the cut. Now in my case, I just put it on the stock and I eyeballed it and cut it. So it was a little bit different. That's probably why I didn't explain it. So now we're going to figure out the bevel angle that we need to cut this for this match. So for that, what I do, is the surface of the bench acts as the plane, the plane of the, sur of the triangle that we're trying to put here. This is the path that the blade is going to have to cut. So if we're treating this plane as the surface of the saw deck, this is the cross-cut sled going you know, straight into the blade, then we want the cut to be perpendicular to the cross-cut sled fence. So we're going to put this here, and we're just going to slide that over. There. If this was the fence on my cross-cut sled and I'm pushing it through, the blade is going to be cutting straight on here. So now we need to figure out what this tilt is. That, we just need to use a transfer bevel. So in my case, I'm going to be doing this one-handed, so I'm going to tighten this up a bit so that I can push it up. Now, you need to put this you know, parallel to this front. So you don't want to put it arbitrarily. It needs to be parallel. That'll actually make a difference in the angle. So I'll get this right up to that edge. Tip it up so you can still see what I'm trying to accomplish. Right there. Tighten it up. This is the triangle that I showed you on the video. So if we take this and I put this bevel gauge on there, you can see that that was the cut that I ended up needing to make this thing fit. And you can verify this triangle by putting it here on this table and just pushing it up against the side. So now that I've cut it, you'll be able to see down here that that's a clean angle. Now here it looks like there's a step, but you're wondering this is the same stock that I used. This is the same thickness. So why is that that we have a step there? 
Of course, I can explain it with some math using linear algebra and trig and stuff, but we don't really care about the math so much as just to know, well, why is it there and what does it mean? Easier to explain that with an animation. Now, in the animation, I have two boards of equal thickness. There's an included angle between them as they pivot through. And you'll notice that the bevel angle bisects that included angle. And as long as it bisects it, so it's half, it's always going to make for a clean joint. The outside is going to be clean and the inside is going to match up for the thickness. Now, what if instead these boards were joined, but the bevel angle was actually cut a little bit further towards one side or the other of the bisection? Now, in this case here, you'll notice there's that step. This is actually the exact same case that I have with the tapered octagon. Now, again, in the tapered octagon case, I don't care if there's a little step on the inside because nobody's going to see the inside. What I care about is that the outside is flush and clean. And we did get that with this part. But back to our animation, this can show what happens if you were to try joining boards of different thicknesses. So in this case here, if the one board was actually thinner, you notice that now the joint is clean again. So in the case of taking dissimilar thicknesses of boards and joining them, the bevel angle isn't going to be the bisection of the included angle. It's actually going to lean more towards the thin board side. Now, how much does involve math, and we're just not going to do that right now.